this video, we're going to discuss how and when to get started with your law school outlining. So before we can talk about how to outline, we need to make sure that you have the appropriate materials to actually outline. So let's talk about what those materials are. First things first, you should have your class syllabus. So what I'm screen sharing with you is an example of a criminal law syllabus, and I'll show you, I'll show you why you'll need this in just a moment. So that is the first thing that you need, your class syllabus. The second thing that you need to make sure you have handy are your class notes. So here, for instance, I have some notes we'll be working with, um, also corresponding to a criminal law class. So you want to make sure that you have those. Something else you'll need to outline is your case book. Uh, so if you have multiple case books for class, uh, make sure you have those available. You'll also want to make sure that you have any sort of supplement that you're using. So if you use like a case brief supplement or maybe examples and explanations, you'll want those handy. And then finally, of course, your laptop. Uh, that way you can create your outline electronically and continuously add to it throughout the semester. So now that you have all of your materials, and again, just to recap what those are, syllabus, notes, case book, any supplements that you might use, and of course, your laptop. So now that you have what you need, let's talk about how to outline. So as I mentioned, this is an example of a syllabus from class. So let's take a quick peek at that. You can see that it uh, outlines the basics that this professor has decided to talk about, such as introduction to criminal law, theories of punishment, burdens of proof, uh, mistake of fact and mistake of law, strict liability, homicide, and the like. You can see that there are some assignments under it, which is what many professors do when they put together their syllabus. Next handy, we have our notes, as of course we know we'll need to be able to outline. Um, obviously, these are very good looking notes. Your class notes might not be this uh, nice looking and that's okay, uh, but you'll have your notes handy. So here you can see there's a lot going on. So let's talk about how to use these materials. And the very first step to outlining and outlining efficiently is to make sure you understand what the overall structure of your outline should look like. And the good news is you have guidance here. This is not something that you need to completely make up or materialize on your own. That is why you use your syllabus. That is why your syllabus is a necessary piece of material that you need to be able to outline efficiently. So at this first step, we're figuring out that overall structure of our outline. And again, we use that syllabus for guidance. So here you can see what we did is we basically took our syllabus and we recreated it. So again, you see that introduction to criminal law, theories of punishment, and it keeps going on just like our syllabus did. So this is kind of uh, the, the skeleton outline, so to speak, the basic structure um, of what you'll be working with. Then step two is when you actually get started with the substance of your outline. You'll start with your first issue and essentially use your class notes to fill in the applicable rules that go with each issue. So we know that the very first thing our professor is talking about in this criminal law class is the introduction to criminal law. And I know that because that's what my syllabus says. And my class notes, which I'll show you in just a second, discuss that introduction to criminal law. So let me show you those class notes on this piece. Here my notes talk about there being two elements to every single criminal offense, uh, the actus reus, which is the guilty act, um, and then what this means, right? We don't punish thoughts. Uh, it discusses policy reasons for why we don't punish thoughts. It talks about the fact that there's not criminal liability for an omission unless it falls into one of these five categories, which the student outlined nicely here. And then it briefly discusses that second requirement for every criminal act, which is the mens rea or the guilty mind. Okay, so these are your class notes. So getting back to outlining, we know that this first step is to find the first issue and then to extract the rules from our outline that go with that applicable issue. So here, that's exactly what the student did. We know that there are two elements of every crime, the first being the actus reus. So that's our first issue. And you can see here that the student essentially uh, copy and pasted their notes, right? You see the rule here. It literally says rule. 
And then you can see that they have those uh, five exceptions discussing omissions and failures to act, again, coming directly from the notes. So I just want to stop here for a second and allow you to reflect. Uh, this is good. This is a good first step in outlining. Uh, this student has taken the applicable rules to the first issue and inserted them into their outline. Now, you need to make sure that you continue with the rest of the steps of outlining, because if you were just to stop here, I uh, firmly believe that this outline wouldn't be that helpful to you in the future. So make sure that you don't stop here by just inserting your class notes into your outline. That is not the goal of outlining. Uh, the goal of outlining is to extract that relevant information from your class notes and put it together like a puzzle in your outline. So that way your outline works for you. So that brings us to our next step. You want to make sure that you're not just copying and pasting your notes into your outline, right? So that means you need to break down the rules into more manageable parts. Um, it's not really helpful to have all of these paragraphs copied and pasted into your outline. You want to break it down. Try to divide it into chunks and more manageable parts. And this is because the goal of outlining is that you actually have work product to review later. And it's a lot easier to review rule statements uh, that have elements or that are broken down into smaller pieces because ultimately you want to be memorizing your outline uh, and memorization is much easier when you can break things down into more manageable chunks or parts. So let's show you what that might look like here. Using that exact same information where we had previously copied and pasted our notes about the actus reus, here we're breaking it down. We're trying to make it more manageable and kind of parsing it down into smaller pieces. This oftentimes means deleting a lot of your notes and cleaning up your notes, uh, and that is okay. I know that makes people uncomfortable sometimes because they're deleting notes, but that's okay. Remember, an outline is not your class notes. If your outline looks like your class notes, you're not outlining correctly. Um, so it's okay to delete things and to clean it up. Ultimately, that is your goal. So here, what this uh, student did um, is they broke it down a little bit more. You can see that it is centered around this basic rule, which is now um, a little bit of a smaller sentence. You can see that we've also uh, broken down and kind of pulled apart uh, these five categories regarding omissions, rather than it being just this one long paragraph. And then this student, uh, specifically numbered them. So it's much easier to see that there are these five um, categories. Further, under contracts, uh, there's two specific types of contracts to be familiar with as it relates to this, which the student uh, broke down even further so that it stands out. And then the student inserted the policy reasons. Uh, and depending upon who your professor is and what the class is, those can become very important. So again, the student set this out in a part rather than jumbling it all together with its rule statements above. And I think it's also helpful to take another moment to reflect. This is simply a lot easier to look at than this, right? This kind of gives us some direction um, and it is just more manageable. Once you are done uh, deleting your notes, cleaning them up, breaking them down into more manageable parts, the next thing you wanna make sure that you're doing is adding in the relevant cases. And to be clear, we're recommending that you're not briefing cases and inserting those case briefs into your outline. No, that is not the goal. Instead, we think it's best if you extract those rules from the cases and then insert those rules into your outline where it makes sense. Uh, some people like to highlight case names and then insert the rule after that highlight. Some people, you know, color coat that font and turn all of their cases a certain color. Ultimately, your outline needs to work for you. So do whatever makes the most sense. So what this student did is they read the case of um, the appeal of O'Boyle. And you can see here that this student did a really nice job by basically boiling down the rule into a sentence. And this rule, uh, they read this case specifically uh, illustrating this idea of a statute requiring someone to act. And then when they fail to act, if there's a statute telling them to do so, there would be criminal liability for that omission. So the student uh, found where the rule belonged on the outline and inserted it appropriately. Similarly, 
This student read the case of Davis v. Commonwealth, um, and this speaks to an implied contract. And if there's a contract to act, then failure to act would be an omission that could result in criminal liability. Again, the student did a really good job. They didn't book, uh, they didn't case brief this here, right? It's just a sentence or so. Uh, that basically extracts the reason why they read it or the rule and then inserted that into their outline. Um, so that is essentially your fourth step. Any and all cases uh, that you want to boil down into a rule and then insert it into your outline where it belongs. You're still not done. At step five, you should use those hypothetical examples or important points that your professor has made in class to help illustrate a rule. And this is why using your class notes uh, to outline is your most valuable resource because ultimately your professor is writing your exam. It's helpful to understand the types of examples or points your, uh, your professor makes uh, with regard to certain rules or topics you're discussing in class. Some students like to, again, use certain types of uh, highlighting or font or specific color coding to illustrate hypotheticals or important points that their professor made. That way, when they're reviewing their outline, they can tell the difference between cases and specific things their professor stated. Again, do whatever works for you because ultimately the goal of an outline is for it to work for you. So again, to illustrate this point, this professor made a hypo about offering voluntary assistance and how this exception about omissions works. And the student decided to uh, kind of draw that positive attention to these hypos in red font because that works for them. And again, they took this hypo from their notes, they cleaned it up, and then inserted it where it belonged. And this is exactly what you want to do because, again, the goal of outlining is so that you can review your outline and you want those important points that your professor made uh, to be kind of on your radar. And they will be if they're in your outline. The sixth and final step is going to be very specific to the class that you're in and your specific professor and their approach to teaching the law. But make sure that you're identifying and drawing attention to the minority rules, exceptions to the rules, and any unsettled parts of the law. Some professors love to focus on, um, you know, differing rules or differing approaches. Some love to discuss how the law is unsettled in certain areas. So you want to make sure that when you're outlining, you're not simply ignoring those portions of your notes and that they're making their way into your outline in the correct place. So make sure if that's applicable to your notes or your class that you are doing that to complete your outlining. So to summarize the importance of outlining, you really want to make sure that you are simply not copying and pasting your class notes into an outline form and then saying that you're done. You should view outlining as the opportunity to go over your notes, to synthesize your notes, to clean your notes up, to summarize them and extract what is important. And you're taking all of that and putting it in your outline. So now that you have a better idea about how to outline, I briefly want to mention why you should start outlining sooner rather than later. In fact, if you can start outlining right at the beginning of the semester, we think that is excellent and that you should try your very best to do so. And let me tell you why starting to outline sooner rather than later is so, so important. The first reason is the sooner you start, the sooner you're simply going to learn the crucial skill of outlining. Outlining is challenging. It's unlike a lot of things you've done before. So the sooner you get going at it, the better you're going to become at it. The second reason you should start outlining soon on in the semester is you're going to uh, have a better hold of the material the sooner you, you start. And that's because outlining requires you to think about your notes, clean them up, synthesize it, and of course, extract what's important from them, which means you're thinking about the material and you're ultimately going to understand it better. The third reason to start outlining earlier is you're going to have time to actually use your outline. The goal of outlining is that you learn your outline. And the sooner you start, the more time you're going to have with it. The fourth reason to start outlining sooner rather than later is you're not going to feel lost in class. This speaks to the second reason I already stated about why you should start early is you're simply going to have a better hold on the material and you're going to feel better and more confident in class. And then the last reason to get started outlining early is that you can actually use your study period to study. 
So many students are behind when the study period rolls around and they have all of their outlining for all of their classes to do. That doesn't leave them a lot of time to actually learn their outlines or to learn the law and then to practice taking exams. If you get started outlining earlier, you can actually use your study period to continue to learn and memorize the law and then to practice preparing for exams. And these are the types of things that are going to allow you to do very well on your finals and to set you apart from your peers.